Hello Internet. Um, I'm just here to introduce you to my Tektronix TDS-210 oscilloscope, which I got in pieces in a bag off of eBay for $25. It was completely disassembled, missing all kinds of stuff, or so I thought. And when I asked the fellow uh, what was missing, he said, I don't know. He found it at a garage sale in complete pieces. All of this was off. The top was off, all the handle was off, all the boards were out in a bag. So I paid $25, took a risk, thought, well, if it works, if, you know, that's good. I put it together, and sure enough, it worked perfectly, other than missing one BNC. It's missing this BNC. It snapped off, apparently, or at least it looks like it snapped off. Because when I went inside here, I looked at it. There are pegs there, but it's gone. And this this particular model and this family of, of scopes these do snap off apparently so I spent a very long time and I do mean a very long time a couple of months looking on eBay and looking all over the place trying to find components and then EEEV blog had I decided to actually type in TDS 210 repair BNC and sure enough the EE EV blog actually has this exact scope with this problem missing a B and C and they do a repair there and the best part is they list off the model of the B and C and they say it's a 50 ohm BMC um, 50 ohm jack and I ordered it on Mauser and there was a link to it there was a link to another website and it was a website in England for some reason and I couldn't get it to be shipped here so I found it on Mouser and I ordered two of this model BNC um, TE connectivity RF connector coaxial connector uh, and that's what this is and this goes right here so what we're going to do is open this up and once I open it up I will then show you the board. I already did some desoldering de and stuff like that and I'm going to continue today and you'll come along with me I hope. I'll be right back. So the nice thing about this particular oscilloscope is there's two screws, whoops pardon me, there's two screws here one there and one there under the handle and there's a button here and then there's all the buttons that go on the front. You take off the two screws, the button and the buttons on the front and the scope comes apart fairly easily. That's all the screws you really have to deal with. Um, beyond that, it's all clip and pressure fitted. And that is something I do like about the scope a lot. Um, now, I wish these were not sort of tension fitted in, because the more you take them out, the more you wear the plastic in the front. That's too bad. Uh, they're sort of self-tapping screws. But aside from that, that's, this is a great design for repair. I'm really happy about that. So I'm going to open this up now that I got the handle off. I got, I'm going to take a screw out, both screws out, and then this will come apart fairly easily aside from the bunch of clips at the bottom which you have to watch for. The scope will be fairly easy to take apart. It's a great scope. I'm very happy to have it. And I will be right back. So before I continue on, I wanted to show you the uh, scope with the face off. Here's the face. And there's the scope, faceless. And that's where the B and C used to be. And then these are the other two. Now I did some solder cleaning down here, and I did some down here too. So I'm going to reattach. I was going to move this one over to here because this is one I don't see myself using ever. Um, that's external trigger. However, seeing as I got that, I got that new one which arrived within a day or two. I'm going to instead use the new one here. Now this is a copper ground that we cannot forget. Already I've taken this apart, put it back together, and then realized I left that piece out and had to take it all apart again to put that back in. So anyways, this is what I was saying about clips. Everything here is just clipped together and ribbon cables. So this is really a nicely designed scope. It's very simple. Well, I mean, probably not really, but it is very simple to take apart and fix. Um, I'm very fond of it, actually. Uh, sorry for the low lighting. I don't have better lighting, I don't think. 
Maybe. Maybe I have better lighting. Is that better? Kind of? Okay. Anyways, I'm going to continue to take this apart and then we will have a look. Yeah, so to show you quickly what I mean by it, it's a tool list design practically, I will take out the oscilloscope. There. That is the whole scope. That's it. Anyways, I will be back. Hi hey there, so here we are. I had the uh, focus. Ooh. There you go. I had to clean out those holes pretty aggressively and clean out that hole. But this now fits there rather nicely. It fits pretty well. I mean, I've got to solder it in and put it in place, but it fits rather well. It actually is a good size. It's the exact one that I need. Aftermarket, mind you, but the exact one. Uh, so yeah, next I'll solder this in and then I'll show you the finished result. I'm rather pleased though. It's been... Focus! Hmm. It's been a while, but I've been waiting to find the right part. It was a real search to find that piece. I'll try to link it below. Thank you. So here we are, folks. It's all put in place now. My <laughs> That's their soldering job. That's mine. Pretty bad. Um, I had to fix this one up a bit. And it's not a whole lot better. Pardon the focus. Come on. You can do it. Don't know why this camera's having problems focusing. There we are. That is another one of my jobs. Again, that's the professional job. And this is my job here. But anyways, it's on now. And if you look, it's on evenly, pretty much on line with the others. And it is and it is in place. Looks pretty good. It does line up. Which I'm happy about pretty much. And it's soldered, or soldered, depending on how you pronounce it. So now I'll put this back together. There's the insides, the other part of it, power supply and so forth, plug, you know. Yeah, ribbon cable, things like that cable to the front where the knobs are. I'll put it back together and I will loop back with you in a minute. So here we are. The scope is completely reassembled. The only thing I'm missing now is this little knob here. It doesn't have a plastic one. I could either design that in 3D and print it or I could order one online. You guys let me know. Which one would you like? Would you like to see this designed and printed to imitate this or would you like to just, I mean, might as well just order one, or what would you like? So anyways, back to this. Here's the new connector attached, where it was missing before. Here's the old ones. And now, for the first time, we're going to power it up. First, we'll connect this connector for the very first time. There we go. Now we connect number two. Oop, that was a lot easier. And we'll turn it on, and we'll see what it says. Did I do something bad, or does it work? Gets power. All things pass. Very, very good. That's a good sign. And we're going to get past the boot screen. There we go. Now red is the new one, channel one. So we're going to start with yellow, because I know yellow works. Let's get the square wave going. For those of you who don't know scopes, there's always an area that has a square wave to test. It generates a square wave signal for testing purposes. Now these are new probes. They're not calibrated. 
So channel two works. Excellent. We know channel two works. It's been working all the way along and it still works. I didn't fry anything on the board. That's a good sign because at least I have channel two. Now channel one was desoldered. This BNC was disconnected and clipped off or snapped off. I don't know why. It might be that something in here is dead and I just did all this for fun and to spend an afternoon or an evening. Or the BNC inside was just, as these tend to be, twisted and, pro and pushed too hard, desoldered and snapped, and then somebody just clipped it off, didn't bother to fix it because it's a 210, it's an old scope, and they just ran with one channel. I'm hoping it's that, because otherwise this might actually be burned out. Now, what I've been told is that some people would use this on mains, and this scope had an issue where it would be plugged into mains to test mains and just burn out the channel. I didn't see any damage in there, <laughs> other than maybe what I did, but I'm hoping that's not the case. Oh, this clamp is tight. So, let's find out. Here we go. Let's hope. Are we ready? There we go. Uh oh. That's too bad. That's a real shame. Doesn't seem to be working. Just giving off noise. So what we're going to do is take that probe out. Maybe I didn't solder it properly. We're going to take this probe and transfer it over because maybe, maybe it's the probe. I don't think it would be. You got to test. So with the new probe, it's still a flat line. Oh, <laughs> and it turned off. Get out. Channel 1 works. I just had it turned off because it wasn't working at first. It works. I have a two channel scope working perfectly. But apparently when you turn off this channel, it just turns off. Makes sense. So, it looks as if whoever had done this just simply snapped off. The BNC had snapped and so they just removed it and didn't bother to fix it. Then they disassembled the whole thing. Maybe they took it for parts. I don't know. But this is a perfectly good working little scope. I am so pleased. I paid $25 for it plus $35 for shipping and handling. $10 for a new... No, uh, $6 and then $30 for shipping on the new probe. I am very pleased. And this is not in landfill. This was, this was, this was a random purchase from somebody who found it on a flea market, sold it on eBay, and didn't know if it worked. Bought it for 25 bucks plus shipping, like I said. Got it working, did the repair. And it's a perfectly good scope for somebody at my level of doing electronics. 60 hertz, megahertz, one gig, one gig sample. Perfectly good scope. You'll have to pardon me, I'm really quite tired and really pleased this works. I'm itching to play with it now. <laughs> so, this is now why I was doing all this. This here is a designed synth board by Usynth, 
who designs classic synthesizer Moog style synthesizer Moog modules. And this is a board that needs to have a two channel scope. I could not use this scope on this because it needs two channels to test it. And so I stopped working on it, plus I needed to order a few components. I needed to get proper these, you know, these are single turn, I needed ten turn trim pots. And I needed to get a few capacitors for this, which have arrived. And I believe these have all arrived. So now we can proceed with this project. And we can put it in my synthesizer, which is incomplete, desperately incomplete. And all because EEEV blog posted a very old blog on how to fix this right here. So if I don't post it down below, you can go to E you can search on EEEV blog's website for Tektronix TDS 210 scope and how to fix the BNC and you'll find it. So thank you to EEEV blog. Thank you very much for listing this. I am so pleased and you listed where to find the BNC and then on and you get and the source gave the serial number which let me order it on Moser. I am beyond happy. So thank you Dave at EEV and whoever else posted that little article. I am deeply grateful and thank you folks for tuning in. I now have a working scope. I am so pleased. Yeah, very pleased. Anyways, have a good evening, if it's evening where you are. Have a good morning or good afternoon or a good midnight, however you please. And I thank you for tuning in. Tune in for the synth build. That'll be the next project. Thank you.